Welcome to the Book Party Podcast. Join us as we journey into the world of books with Michael T. Prepare to be captivated by engaging interviews, insightful discussions, and fascinating stories. You'll discover new adventures and gain insight into the creative process of the authors themselves as they share their struggles and accomplishments. Now let's hear from Michael T. Michael, Michael T. This is Michael T. Welcome back, podcast listeners, to another exciting episode of the Book Party Podcast. Today, we're delving into the world of higher education, college admissions, and uncovering the secrets of giving your student that much-needed edge in their journey towards success. Get ready to be inspired as we introduce you to our incredible guest, Susie Watts. Susie Watts isn't just an author, she's a college consultant, speaker, and a beacon of guidance for students and parents navigating the complex realm of college admissions. Her groundbreaking book, Beyond the GPA, How to Give Your Students an Edge with College Admissions, is a treasure trove of insights that goes far beyond the numbers providing a roadmap to achieving academic dreams beyond the classroom. With a passion for empowering students and families, Susie has penned numerous articles and blogs illuminating the college application and admissions experience. Her wisdom is more than words on paper. It's a lifeline for those seeking to demystify the often overwhelming college journey. But that's not all. Susie also invites us into her writing journey, sharing her experiences and expertise on social media. From navigating the publishing process to offering glimpses into the inspirations that fuel her work, she's a true advocate for the power of words and their ability to shape lives. In this episode, we'll delve into Beyond the GPA pages and explore Susie's unique approach to college admissions. We'll uncover strategies to help your student stand out, gain insights into the holistic admissions process, and discover how to create an application that reflects not just grades, but the essence of who your student truly is. So if you're a parent, or student navigating the intricate world of college admissions and seeking guidance on going beyond the numbers and unlocking opportunities that align with your passions and aspirations, you're in for a treat. Tune in as we embark on a journey with Susie Watts and her transformative book, Beyond the GPA, Get Ready to Gain an Edge in College Admissions as we explore the wisdom of Susie Watts and her book that changes the game. This is let's dive in and discover the keys to unlocking a brighter academic future together. Now, Susie, why don't you take it from here, fill in the blanks a bit and tell our listeners about yourself. Thank you, Michael. I have been working with students uh, as a college consultant for more than 30 years to help them navigate what is an ever-changing landscape of college admissions. I would say that especially in the last few years, we have seen some very dramatic changes. And I know that a lot of parents um, assume that things probably haven't changed from the time that they actually sent applications to colleges and had that experience. So I had been writing for quite some time, taking notes and putting together my ideas on most of the subjects that are applicable for the college admissions journey, and felt like it was time for me to put these together in a book that would help parents primarily um, understand what it was that they could actually do to help their child with college admissions. So the idea was that oftentimes students maybe don't have the GPA that they need to have, 
or even if they do, lots of different students have that. And so it seemed like it was time to talk about some of the other things beyond the GPA that could actually help students find schools where they would be happy and successful. And those would actually meet their academic and their personal and their financial needs as well. And thus, beyond the GPA, how to give your student an edge with college admissions um, is my new book that is to be published on Amazon next week. Okay, Susie. Well, on your publishing journey, did you go the self-publishing route or the way of finding an agent and go the agency route? I went the self-publishing route because it seemed to me like that made better sense. Um, I have found that it has worked so well so far. Um, I think one of the things that I didn't realize, and this being my first book, um, was the number of edits that could be necessary to finally have it into a formatted copy. Um, today, I actually read probably the ninth edit and hoped that I wasn't going to find any errors. But again, I probably found seven or eight that I sent back to the person who was formatting it um, because I wanted to read well and I wanted to be right. But that is probably one of the things that has surprised me most is that it isn't as simplistic as I thought it might be. Okay. Um, so you, you had to collaborate a little bit. I mean, the words are yours, but when it comes to formatting and it comes to things like that, editing, and what about your cover? Did you do the cover or did you have a cover designer do that? Actually, um, I don't know if you're familiar with the website Upwork. That is where I went yes. on and I looked at um, multitudes of different people who provided service. And I found a woman who I think uh, is very highly rated. Um, she actually has a, a, an amazing number of things that she has done. I was very pleased to see and talk with her. And she actually was the one who did the book cover and she will also is in the process of finishing the formatting. Um, so I highly recommend, um, you know, people like that that you can find. I felt she was reasonably priced and um, that she really could do what I was looking for to get this in the state that it needed to be to be published. No, fantastic. See, what I've done, I'm on book number four, and I've developed a team for the things that I need for certain formatting and book covers and certain issues and Upworks one. And I use Fiverr as well. Uh, so I use people in certain issues that I need and I've developed a team and it certainly makes things a lot faster and easier when you have the right people in the right places. No anyway, question. so why don't you, I'm sorry, go ahead. I know that I just said there is no question that is correct. Why don't you take us to what you would consider to be your worst author moment when you wrote this book? I guess I would say my worst author moment is in the edits. And I think, unfortunately, I don't think the book was ready to be formatted when I thought it was. And so as a result, I think that was what caused the numerous edits because um, this woman actually did the formatting. And then as I looked at it, I just felt like it really wasn't right. And it wasn't really her fault. It was more my just not having it edited as well as it needed to be. And then every time she'd come back with something and corrections, I would find more. So I guess my advice to anyone writing a book would be to make sure it has been really well edited before you give it to someone to format, because that has probably been the most frustrating part. 
and just this has been going on for a month and it is not her fault. I think it was mine. And I think I have learned how to handle that differently on my next book. Yeah, that's the lessons learned part and it'll make it better next time for sure. Well, let's turn that around a little bit and let's go to what I call the epiphany moment, or some people would say the aha or the wow moment. Uh, anything except writing, you could have been doing anything else when you're, you got this book going on and all of a sudden this bright light bulb goes off in your head and it's like, bing. And, and this idea comes to you, a thought comes to you and you say, Oh man, I have got to get a pen. I got to get a paper and I got to write this down right now so that the thought doesn't escape you. Take us to a moment like that. Well, I listen to a lot of podcasts. I read a lot of information online, all pertaining to writing a book. And I'd have to say that probably there hasn't been one particular epiphany, but there are things that I will find where someone says something in terms of marketing, probably more so than anything else, that will ring a bell and make me put down whatever I'm doing and make a point of putting that into my notes to include it. What is, we'll go to today, what is the one thing that you're fired up about or excited about right now today? I am really excited to get this book published because I think that it will be a great help for many parents. I don't like to say this, but I have five children of my own, so I've been through this experience with them and hundreds of other kids. And I think a lot of times we, parents in particular, feel like the high school is going to provide the college counseling that students need. And realistically, when you think in terms of most high school counselors dealing with at least 200 or more students, they can't give many the individual attention that will really benefit them. And that's really kind of the impetus that got me thinking, um, if parents had these steps in front of them, um, that I think it would really make a difference um, in terms of the college choices that they had, but paying for college, all of the aspects that are covered in this book that a lot of times they just face and don't have the answers. Okay, that sounds great. This is Michael T. Thank you for being with us this morning. We invite you to go to bookpartypodcast.com, hit that subscribe tab on top, then scroll down to the icon of your choice, such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, or Odyssey, where you can find us on one of your favorite platforms. Download and follow us there, and please leave a review. Please don't forget to download our video newsletter and get the latest information on our upcoming shows. Now, Susie, we're going to enter the lightning round. In the lightning round, we have four pointed questions for four pointed answers. What was, before you actually started writing at all, before you became an author, what was holding you back from becoming an author in the first place? I think probably more than anything um, was just working with students. Um, it's pretty time consuming, especially when they are in the fall of their senior year. And I just think I realized what would be involved, or maybe I didn't realize, but I just don't think I thought that I had sufficient time to really put something together that would be worth publishing. Uh, okay. And this stuff changes sometimes year to year, sometimes every couple of years. This, this is a ever changing thing that, that, that happens, you know, every couple of years, this changes. Correct. Okay. So, all right. 
when you were writing, what was the best advice that you had ever received? Um, in terms of the book itself or just advice that I had? Just advice that you had in general from when you were writing. Okay. Um, I think the best advice was to cover the topics that were really most concerning for parents. And um, that's why I tried to take the book from the very beginning where people, parents are actually asking their child what is important in a college experience. And I took that all the way then through to the end, which is actually transitioning to college. So I think trying to make sure that I have not left any stone unturned has been the biggest message that I have gotten so that it truly is an essential guidebook. And as far as I'm concerned, there's probably not much more I could have said. Okay. Could you share with our listeners an internet resource that you used while you were writing your book? Well, one thing that I think, um, are you talking in terms of for subject matter or are you talking um, about marketing or what exactly? Well, just an internet resource you were using while you were writing. Okay. I mean, it could have been something like a thesaurus. It could have been something like, you know, anything that you were using while you were writing. Um, one thing that I do use uh, after I have written something, I use that Grammarly um, website. Okay. And I would put everything I wrote, each particular strategy through that. And I thought that was really quite helpful. Um, sometimes it would dictate that, for one reason or another, it probably could be said a little bit better, but it picked up on punctuation and things like that. And I consider myself a pretty good writer, but I was a surprise sometimes how I just simply didn't think, see things on my own. <laughs> yeah, I, I use Grammarly all the time. It's, it's actually integrated into my computer system, even for my emails, <laughs> the Grammarly no, is. so Right, I would agree. I it think makes... you can use it for a lot of things. It makes me sound smarter than I am, you know. It's, uh... <laughs> okay. <laughs> but that's okay. Uh, could you share one of your personal habits that you say would contribute to your success? I think that I am pretty tenacious when I get on to something. And... Um, Sometimes I probably become even a little obsessive, but that has its positive and its negatives. But I think that is really what has helped me to stick with this and to get it finished. Whereas I've started things before and they turn into an article or a blog post or something like that, but I never really saw it through to the end. So that's something that I think has really made this come to fruition. Yeah, because you do write blogs and articles, and if they're keeping up with your blogs, that also gives a lot of information there too as well, right? Oh, yeah, no question. Um, I've also, you know, discovered a number of websites, Medium being one of them, where you can publish your writing. And some of it I've published on there um, has just been like my writing journey. But then recently, um, just kind of for fun, I have gone and published certain things. For example, I had a Volkswagen Beetle when I was in high school. And I wrote the story about the escape that it provided from your teenage woes and one thing and another. And then I did a picture with it and I put it on Facebook and it was amazing how many people responded by, you know, I had one that was red. I remember driving one that looked just like this. I mean, it was really kind of fun to see. So I think I'll probably try to do a little bit more of that when the book is actually completed. 
But I have other ideas that I'd like to do along the writing, especially of an ebook with a bunch of blog posts that I have done that I think would be informative for parents or anybody, really. Right. I, I remember the Beetle. I mean, I was on leave from the Army, and I didn't have a car. And my dad's wife had a uh, Volkswagen Beetle that she let me borrow while I was in town. And uh, it's where I graduated high school at small town and uh, as i would drive around in it of course the only air conditioning is when you rolled the windows down (laughs) right and uh you know a lot of people would say man i remember those i used to have one of them you know and and instead of the sports car being the car of of people being glamorous it was the volkswagen beetle people remembered that car you know you're right there's no anyway Yeah, so Susie, we're now going to enter into the grand finale. So why don't you tell our listeners a way that maybe they can get in touch with you, follow you, or find your book. But now take the time and tell our listeners all about your book. Okay. Well, my book, I think, will be a boon to high school parents. Um, I think it would also be helpful, truthfully, to uh, high school counselors uh, who maybe haven't had the experience with college admissions, with college consultants who are new to the profession. So basically, it is probably one of the most easily followed step-by-step book that tells parents exactly what they need to do. From starting the college search to show interest in colleges, to brainstorm college essays, to demonstrate their interest in schools by connecting on social media, um, there is no question it offers more than I have seen in a book that is published. And it is meant to be something that parents and students can use and work together on. So I am hoping that it will reach people who would really benefit from it. Um, I see no reason why it won't. Um, I think, as I said, it is, there's just a lack, as you mentioned, of information out there that you can count on that is pertaining to college admissions and guiding your students so that they do find schools where they will be successful and thrive. And that is basically what this is about. So um, I am happy to do a second edition if there's anything that I have left out. But I really truly feel as though everything I had to say for the most part is there. But as you mentioned, there are constant changes, test optional, um, a lot of, you know, questions about that. Um, All of the different college deadlines that come and go, things of that kind obviously will change. But again, I have not only provided the steps, but I've also provided a lot of FYIs on all of the different kinds of things that I think people need to consider. And uh, I think they will be making much better choices if in fact they purchase the book and use it as they work with their own student. Okay. Well, Susie, we thank you so much for being here with us today, opening up to us. And I'm sure our listeners appreciate this too. Again, this is Michael T. And I thank you for being with us this morning. To all our listeners, I would invite you to go to bookpartypodcast.com, hit that subscribe tab on top, then scroll down to the icon of your choice where you can find us on one of your favorite platforms, such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, or Odyssey. You can download and follow us there, and please leave a review. Don't forget to sign up for our newsletter to get the latest information on our upcoming shows. Book Party Podcast is owned and powered by MTM Legacy Publishing, LLC. This is Michael T. and signing off. 
You must not miss our next episode as we delve into a world of inspiration, entertainment, and thought-provoking insights. Join Michael T. on the next Book Party podcast and experience a new adventure, a new story, and a complete immersion into the world of Pages Unveiled, Chronicles of the Writing Journey.